These are the plaintiffs, Timothy and Deborah Murphy. Timothy says they hired the defendant to transport their mint 1981 DeLorean from New York to Florida. And when the guy drove the car off the truck, he damaged it. The car bottomed out and the undercarriage is all scratched up now. The car's a collector's item. The defendant refuses to pay for his mistake. And they're suing for $4,909.12, the amount they're owed for repairs. This is the defendant, Lucius Savadell. He says it took him 45 minutes and 105 degree heat to unload the car. The plaintiffs watched the entire process. They had a cold drink together. When the job was done, they signed a damage release form. The next day they call claiming the car scratched underneath? Huh? He did nothing wrong. The plaintiffs never said a thing to him, and that damage could have been caused the next day by them for crying out loud. Owe them all this money? Ha! He's accused of ding the DeLorean. The defendant has filed a candle suit for $5,000 for lost wages. All parties, please raise your right hand. Be seated, come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Douglas. You're welcome, ma'am. Okay, Timothy Murphy and Deborah Murphy? Yes, yes ma'am. Tell me about the DeLorean. Um, actually, the DeLorean belonged to my father originally. He purchased it brand new in 1981. Um, That's the car that originally had the doors yep, it's got open the gold like wing doors and everything. Okay. Uh, from Back to the Future, it's very famous oh, for right, that right. movie and everything like that. So uh, he purchased the car brand new in 1981, and um, I came along in the 90s. But he had held on to the car, and uh, kind of when I was born, he stored it for what I didn't know at the time was for the future to give it to me. And he had told me growing up that if I worked hard and you know, did good in school and was successful in life, that he would gift me the car. And I was mesmerized with this car. It was you know, beautiful. Uh, it's a dream car of mine. So I, I worked hard and um, I did good in school and, and I was able to you actually- You did well in school. I did well in school, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> did well in school, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was very, very grateful my father gifted me his car. So since it had been sitting for about 20 years, he hadn't really used it, um, it had to go through a $20,000 restoration process, about $20,000. Um, that was in January of 2019. That lasted until mid-March of 2019. At the end of March of 2019, um, we went through a broker who filed LGS Transport, uh, Mr. Lucius here, and um, we had the car shipped from my parents' residence up in, in New York down to me in Who's Florida. Who's the lady next to you? Oh, this is my mother. That's your mother? Yes, it is. Okay, go ahead. She, uh, <laughs> she's a co-owner of the vehicle, so that's why she's here with me today. I thought she was your girlfriend. Uh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so go on. So, um, <laughs> kind of so the story. car arrives in Florida. Where? Yes, what the, city? The car arrives in Florida. I live in a town called Estero. It's in between Fort Myers and Naples. And um, as uh, Mr. Savadell is removing the vehicle, um, I don't know if he necessarily had the, the right equipment for his vehicle. It was a, it was a ten car um, semi carrier, and basically the, the DeLorean must have been his, his last stop because it was parked above the cab. There were no other cars on the vehicle on his on his transporter. Um, so in order to get it off the top of the cab to the trailer, tracks. Do you have a be, picture of anything you're saying? Because I have no I idea do, what you're I saying. I do. I don't have an actual picture right, of his, a, a his vehicle. Right, but a demonstrative aid for me. Yes. Let me gather that for you. So that is right here. Now, again, this is not the exact picture of his vehicle. I just tried to find something very similar. On the other photos, you can see the gap. So we had to lay some, well, not we, Mr. Sabadell had to lay some tracks. To all be right, able to. hold on, hold on. All right, all right. So according to you, your car is up here on top of, of where he drives? Yes, Your Honor. All right, and, and then you were starting to say something about to get it from here to there. What is here to there? Uh, on, the, on the other photo that I handed in, there's a gap between the two, um, where the car was parked, and it would have to be transferred over to the other trailer. So we had to lay down tracks. Maybe it was a two-foot gap or a foot gap. I don't know exactly. But the tracks are were... You, are you trying to guess at what happened? No, I'm, not, I'm very certain on what happened. I okay, watched it were happen. you standing there? Yes, I was. So are you saying that you could see a gap? Well, yes, yeah, so there, there was a gap between the tracks on top of his cab and the trailer part. So he had to lay tracks to be able to pull the car off the cab and down the trailer. Oh, so he saw the gap too, and so he laid tracks to be able to... Yes, I, I assume he had to lay tracks to be able to get the car up there as well. Okay, uh, all right, so what, tell me what happens. He gets to Estero, and what happens? So uh, while he's removing the car, the, the gap is about a foot long, and the car is six inches off the ground. The DeLorean is very low. So the tracks that he had laid to get it through that gap were probably about a foot too big. So say they were two-foot two foot ramps on a one-foot gap, so they, they uh, ramped up about a foot. 
So while he was trying to remove the vehicle, there was a lot of trouble. It took about 45 minutes total to remove this vehicle. Constant back and forth. Um, it, was, it was a complete accident, really. But just when he pulled over the tracks, it just scratched the whole bottom of the car. Believe it right not, in front of you. Right in front of me, yep. And, and I'm yelling, and hey, you're scratching the car. You're, you're scratching, scratching the, car. the car. And what does he say? Uh, well, he was in the vehicle. It was kind of hard to communicate at that point. But he had had so much trouble at this point. I think it was kind of like he, that was the only way we were going to be able to get this car off. We were out there. 45 minutes. Did you video any of this? Unfortunately, I didn't. I wish I did. But um, as he's removing it, it had scratched the bottom of the car. The, the DeLorean, believe it or not, even though it's stainless steel, it's actually a fiberglass body underneath. So it's a very, uh, he scratched lines down the bottom of the fiberglass. Did you go underneath so you could see what damage happened? Yes, I did. Did you point it out to him? Yes, I did. And what did he say? He agreed to contact his insurance company, which he did. He, he initiated. Did you video that, the agreement to contact the insurance company? No, I did not. Mr. Savadell, Savadell was a very nice man. Um, he apologized. He, I could tell. It was an accident, you know? Yes, I understand. But you know what happens sometimes when there's an accident and someone's admitting fault? Later on, they think about it and they don't admit fault because they find out it's not in their best interest. So when you have an accident, if you're not going to wait for the police to come and write a report, it is very, very important that you take that phone that's in your pocket. It's not just for taking pictures of your meal. It's also for evidence. So the perfect thing to do is, you're, you're a perfect gentleman, but I'd just like to, if we're not going to call the police about this, this damage, let's just take a uh, you know, will you just say into the camera that you saw that happen and that you, none of that happens, right? Okay. Because you don't watch the people's court. I do not. Because no. I've been saying this <laughs> since cell phones were invented. I know, I should have. That been. take video. Right? Your Honor, it was a very emotional time for me. I was receiving this car that I'd waited my whole life to get. Yes, I know. Which kind of makes it the boggle there. the imagination that you signed a damage waiver. So on the damage waiver that I signed, at first Why I, would you sign something that says there's have, no damage if, as you say, you witnessed the damage on, horribly happening to your dream car that had been your parental reward for a life well lived? Why would you sign something that says the car's in perfect condition, there's no damage? So on the damage release Because, form, see, what's your version of this? Did anything happen during the unloading? The opposite of what he just said. The opposite of what he just said. Mm -hmm. you, you're actually the person unloading it? <clears throat> yes. OK. So, and you're the owner? Yes. All right. Did anybody ever say to you, you scratch the bottom of my car? No. Did you ever say, I'm so sorry for scratching the bottom Absolutely of your car? Absolutely not. Did you ever say, I'm going to contact the insurance company on your behalf? Oh, whoa, oh, oh. The next day when uh, he called me and said there was yes, damage, I told right. him I right. But I mean at that scene. No. OK. No. Uh, did he ever point out to you, there was a gap, this happened, I watched it happen? No. And then you hand him a release to say, all right, did you get the car, is it in good condition? And he goes, oh, yes. And he signs a release, right? Let me see the release. Gives me a tip, takes pictures Gives of you a tip. Takes pictures of me inside the vehicle and everything. Hey, we're in Florida. <laughs> On the damage report, there's no indication to mark damage to the undercarriage of the vehicle. It's only exterior. I'm sorry. Vehicles. Why don't you just write it on the? Is that why you signed it? Why don't you just not sign it? That's one option, right? Mm -hmm. See, because here's the problem, son. If you're coming in here and claiming you saw it all, that's the only way for you to get the money to pay for that for the repairs of that car is if you prove to me that it happened on his watch, and the only way to do that is to not have this. And so all of a sudden, it's happening under his watch. We all know it. It all happened right in front. Because if you notice it for the first time the next day, oh, it's a much harder case to prove. Then the insurance is going to quibble with you, right? That's what happened to you. So now all of a sudden, it's no, 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 no. I saw this whole thing happen that day. But it's very hard for you to say and have me believe when you signed a waiver, which let me tell you what normal people do if they watch damage happen in front of them. They don't sign the waiver. Or they write down, with the exception of the undercarriage, or there's a scratch on the door, or that's the whole point. You see, the waiver is proof that you're saying that the damage didn't happen in front of you. You see? And that you're lying to me and Respect perjuring yourself. No, respect you understand? respectfully, I disagree. I'm, I'm how? how? Why would anyone who just saw their DeLorean damage, their, their parental gift for a life well lived damage, write, yeah, it's all good? Why would anyone do that? I didn't write it, yeah, it was all good. It was just a bunch no, of No, you signed saying it's all good. 
I That's what I had the to point sign is. To receive the car, in order to receive the keys to my vehicle, I had to sign the paperwork in your hand. I'm there, sorry. There was no indication on the vehicle. I have read and understood. There was. N Hold on. I agree with the driver's assessment of the condition report of this vehicle. Transporter is not responsible for personal belongings or any content left in the vehicle. I agree with the driver's assessment of the condition report of this vehicle and the driver's assessment of any problem with a condition is this. Front bumper throughout the car, stainless steel, something has brush marks, different directions appearing as scratches, stains on the driver's side door, back rack, and blah, blah, blah. That's uh, everything you- I did you, that at the origin. At the origin, so that yes. you don't get blamed for it. Right. And then you sign upon receipt, Mr. Murphy, that you agree that that's the condition of the vehicle. You could take a pen and write, undercarriage, blah, 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 but you didn't do that, right? I should have at the time. Yeah, you think? It was very emotional. According emotional to you, day. he calls you. You're very emotional. So I don't have to, I don't have to hold you to the standard of a grown-up. No, Come on, you know? And I'm then according to you, you get a phone call for the first time talking about damage the next day. What does he tell you? Welcome back to the People's Court. I'm RV Levin. The plaintiff says the defendant damaged his DeLorean while trying to get it off his truck. But the defendant says the plaintiff signed a waiver saying everything was A-OK. -okay. Can the plaintiff get around the waiver? Let's go back into the courtroom. Hey, Lou, we have undercarriage damage here. And I was like, oh, sent, he sent me a video. I looked at it. So I'm going to contact my uh, insurance broker. Do you have a picture of the damage? I do. I have, I have multiple pictures of the damage. OK. Yeah, yeah. Just making sure I have it all. You have another OK. OK. Did you ever see the pictures? He sent me a video. It was very, uh, it's not well. It was hard to getting, see? Yes. The car is only six inches off the ground, so it was really hard to take a photo of it. I just kind of had to walk under If the it's car only six it. inches off the ground, Lord knows when this happened. Because six inches off the ground is a problem. Your Honor, this um, happened in front of me. I think it's more like five, and he's saying six because on the back of my BOL it says I'm not responsible for any vehicle scrape. I actually have a Hold on, stop talking, what? For any, I'm not responsible for any vehicle that's scraped that's lower than five inches to the ground. That's why he keeps saying six inches. Okay. It's more like four or five inches. Your Honor, I, says who? You don't have it here to measure it or anything else? You don't, well, do you have some evidence to show me that eyeing. that year, oh, no, by eyeing but, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember what you eyed? No, it was very low, very low. Yeah, very low. Mm -hmm. Six inches is also very low. Mm -hmm. What is... That's just a tape measure to show that the car sits six inches off the Yeah. Ground. Man, that is so low. It is. Six inches is super low. At some... What, why is this bent, uh, curved so, like that? So that's actually a uh, side molding. Uh, that was not the part that was damaged, though. So you're measuring the height of the curve. Um, I, I measured the height. The lower part. parts of the curve would be five inches, which is kind of funny. All right, but either way, I don't care if it's five or six, it's super, super low. And the crux of this case is that you've got to prove that it happened. Once you pick, you know what I do when I get a car from a valet? I discreetly, as soon as my car's coming, because I don't want to look like a weirdo, I start to walk around the car so that by the time I get in my car, I have walked around and noted that there's no damage. Because the minute I drive away, that's when it becomes hard for me to prove it happened at their valet. That is what I do every time someone hands me a car. When, when, when the repair shop hands me a car, you walk around and you check for damage. My husband is a lawyer and a judge. And when a transport company brings him a car, which is just a little too often for my taste, OK, he is lying on the ground at the point of Transfer. Look at oh, his face is bigger than six inches, so it would be really hard. But he is doing. He's so squirrely about this topic, um, and which is what you're supposed to do. I know that you were excited. I know that you were happy. I know all those things. But you know what? I also know. I also know that the one opportunity you had to write down what you claim happened before your very eyes. You didn't write it, which leads me to believe that you're making it up here. You have a counterclaim against him for 5000 making up that you saw it. 
I know you believe it happened at his hands, but making up that you saw it happen. No, 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 All of a sudden no. now it's a really, really good case where you saw it happen. I I'm pretty sure else. that insurance, do you have anything from the insurance company? I do, I have multiple. Yeah, let me see everything you have from the insurance sure. company. Why do you have a counterclaim against him for $5,000? Loss of work, uh, stress, aggravation, high blood pressure. Okay, but, but how is your high blood pressure <laughs> something he needs to pay you $5,000 for? <laughs> Just because you got it's sued? The work I do is, uh, is tremendous, and I wouldn't be able to transport vehicles all the way around the world with this case hanging over my head. Oh, stop it. You're just making that up. You want to see my blood pressure report? No, I don't. I want to see. <laughs> I want to understand how somehow someone files a lawsuit against you and you stop transporting cars. That's silly. <laughs> I had gone back multiple times with the Hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry. Did you settle this case with his insurance company? No, I never accepted their offer. Because it looks like... Well, I negotiated that, with them a, a few and times. And then you negotiate with them, and then they offered... First they offered 700 then they offered 1000 Well, uh, they originally had an insurance adjuster come out, and they wrote a claim for $2,400, and he kind right, of did, he did the same thing. Right, but why are they... If they believed you that you said something right away, and... He was corroborating you. Oh, he said something right away. And those were the facts that they, the reason why they're negotiating is because they don't want to lose in court, but you've got a weak case because you didn't say something right away. Uh, respectfully, I disagree. Um, Do you have what you get, what you filed? The, uh, did you file anything in writing with the insurance company? I'm sorry. I, did um, you file something in writing? No, I did not. They reached out to me first as, as Lou had reached out to them first. Yeah, he did. I mean, he calls him and says, hey, someone's claiming I damaged it. And then he leaves it. That's why he pays insurance premiums, so he doesn't have to worry about it. That's accurate. If I could add something, if that's all right. You can add all you want. Uh, why do you give the guy a tip if he destroyed your car? Well, he didn't why do you take pictures with him all happy if he destroyed your car? Well, he told me he had never transported his car. $4,900 worth of destruction. Why would anyone take pay him a tip and give him... Um, uh, uh, take pictures with him and and uh, say it's all cool if they saw him do $4,900 worth of dinner. I think he just feel he did it. I don't think he no, saw I, anything I and I'm ruling in favor of the defendant. Wow. Well, the plaintiffs, bottom line, did not prove their case here in court, Mr. Mm -hmm. Murphy. I'm sure you're upset. Uh, I'm a little upset, yes. Let me ask you a question. Did you read that release before you signed it? Really read it? Um, not thoroughly enough, no. I should have. That's what killed so, you. Learning experience for me. That's what hurt you. Yes. You understand that now? I understand now? that, yes. As you look back on it? It's a deep regret of mine. I'm out of a lot of money here and a lot of suffering with this whole thing over a year now. So it's a shame. I had more evidence to present. I didn't have a chance to do yeah, it. Yeah, well, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Whatever evidence you had, that's it. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank, thank you, sir. Mr. Savadell. Did you really bring your blood pressure report to court? <laughs> I sure did. Are you to, serious? Trying to get five racks. <laughs> and I have the report. She didn't want to see it, though. Oh, I can't believe that. Mm -hmm. All right, do you feel a little better now? How is your blood pressure right now? Still high cameras, hot lights. Yep. Yeah, I'll be all right once I hit the car. You will? Yeah. All right, well, congratulations. You're off the hook. Thank you. Have a good one. You're very welcome. West side. <laughs> Harvey? So again, a truism, when you buy something from somebody or you maybe even you take your car to the car wash or you take something to a repair shop, inspect it before the person who delivers it or handles it leaves. Take pictures if there's damage. Once you leave, it's gonna be hard to prove.